Today I would love to talk about what test trigger is about. And test trigger is about two things. Number one, we help our customers to solve test maintenance problem. And number two, we empower non-technical people to be able to very quickly and efficiently build test automation. In particular, uh, you can actually learn how to build test automation easily using test trigger because we have free uh, version of test trigger available online. Okay, so what's the problem with test maintenance? It's actually a little bit worse than it seems. Uh, as you can see on this picture, uh, if you're building tests with Selenium, at some point, and average across the industry, it's about 350 tests per person, uh, the person who is building tests will have so much test maintenance to do on those 350 tests that sure he built that there will be literally no time to build tests anymore. So that's a, a test maintenance ceiling and that's a huge problem. So you can't do anything else because you're just full time on test maintenance. Uh, the Trigger's customers spend about 200 times less time on maintaining the Trigger tests, so we're not necessarily hitting that, uh, uh, that limit, so that's why it's more like a straight line. So you can continue building your tests and achieve your goals even though you already have a lot of tests. And uh, all right, uh, this is great. It sounds too good to be true. How exactly we, we are doing that? And we do that via plain English. You can, in plain English, express anything you'd like. Validations, clicks, clicks is relative locations, um, entering static data, and of course you can enter dynamic data from test data or uh, you can uh, generate unique data based on a certain format. Uh, you can group your steps and give it arbitrary names like a function. And of course you can pass parameters and make them nested. All right. Uh, so this is literally as simple as it is. You can just literally write in English uh, what needs to be done. There is no programming in here. By default, you can literally write any test you'd like without any programming whatsoever. So that means that you can also involve your product managers uh, to build tests before functionality is completed, to review your, your tests, to get everyone on the same page, uh, like literally on the code itself, not on the uh, uh, specification. We have nothing to do with the code. And that just increases, uh, uh, like the um, uh, efficiency uh, of the company, like 10x. Imagine you can think of it as as if uh, you write your gherkin, uh, and it's magically implemented for you automatically. You do not have to write any Selenium. And this is how it works. So basically execute uh, simple instructions. It's all in English and you can group them. It's very simple. However, that's just part of that. The so most important is how it actually executes the test. As the trick is uh, that the most important part about test trigger is the fact that you can express finding any element on the page and dealing with the element on the page purely only from end user's perspective. So uh, you literally just expressing it as if you would write it in your own test case and the trigger would execute it for you, emulating a human interacting with the browser or mobile application. Uh, that is opposed to you have to deal with uh, any details of implementation 
uh, like XPath, CSS selectors, IDs, data test IDs, and so on and so forth. Basically, that means the test trigger is uh, the only um, pure black box end-to-end -end testing framework. And we believe the black box is how it should be for specifically for end-to-end -end tests. Mind you, of course, uh, you should have your uh, unit test and integration test, and you should do some white box testing, of course. Uh, uh, but uh, we believe that you also should do black box testing for end-to-end -end tests specifically, and we helping you to do it. Let me give you some examples so that you understand what I mean by uh, from end user's perspective, and you can do anything. For example, you can click uh, on a button by text, like in this example, it says click communication preferences and it highlights the click. Um, and you can do things like uh, enter product into search products. Then you can say things like enter test into first name with the space, first space name, enter rigor into last space name, as in here. Uh, and the way it works is very simple. So the system would uh, find visible tags. And if you're looking like a label, they don't have to be a label, but if you look like a label for an input, they would associate it, it would associate it with an input so that you can refer to that input by that label. Uh, moreover, tomorrow your engineers will get rid of those labels and start using placeholders in these inputs as well, like the one above. Uh, and test trigger test will still continue uh, to function. You still will be able to say enter test into first space name as soon as a space name is somewhere which indicates that this input is a um, uh, first name input. From end user's perspective, how it would look to you as a human. That's a that's whole goal. Uh, of course, uh, there is uh, more interesting scenarios, like for example, in this particular page where are two identical update buttons. Uh, you might ask how exactly you would click on this button instead of that one. And uh, uh, you can say it exactly as you would. You can say things like, uh, click on the second update button, uh, click on update button below change your password, click on update in uh, change your password section, um, and there's like 20 other ways how you can refer to this update button depending on in business context one way or another uh, would be preferable. Uh, those are just interesting examples. Uh, there is uh, there is more uh, where like it would be just plain impossible to do in, in a framework like Selenium. For example, when you're writing code, there is this documentation link, you can click on it and you get to the documentation, working with tables, and here is an example of a table in here. And for example, uh, uh, you are automating this page and you want to click uh, on the second button on the row containing this ID and column actions. And you can literally exactly say that uh, just like that in test trigger and it will execute just that. So it will click on the second button on the row containing this ID and column actions. That's how, how it works. And <clears throat> uh, mind you, it will work if uh, there will be more columns, less columns, this actions column will become the first one, the last one, we will be added more. Uh, it does not matter because uh, this is a name of the column. Like, and uh, uh, more interestingly is today this table might be rendered as a table with TRs and TDs. Tomorrow you might uh, find out that engineers have changed the implementation of all tables 
and now they are all just a set of divs just looking like a table but they're not actually a table they're just visually resembling a table well great news in case of test trigger that would still continue to function exactly the same way because yet again in test trigger you expressing a steps from end user's perspective purely from end user's perspective and as soon as uh, your specification is still correct then the test will succeed and test trigger provides guarantees for that because test trigger runs its own infrastructure and of course you can use third party infrastructure providers like browser stack and such um, uh, but by default you will run will for simple cases we run uh, our own infrastructure will make sure that we um, uh, we will rerun test on a different server in case if your browser crashes and there will be timeout or anything related to infrastructure and might not be related necessarily to uh, your test in particular and of course like it will wait until elements are there before interacting they're available for interaction and so on and so forth so you will do the sensible thing similar to how you would do it uh, uh, yourself if you were to execute those tests manually so once again test trigger is a common sense executable specification language it will execute your specifications using common sense emulating exactly how you would do it as a human if you were to interact with a browser or mobile application and of course, there is much more than that. Um, you can work with uh, emails, text messages, test two-factor authentication, sign up flow easily. Um, like you can test both native mobile and web in the same test, switch between them, run multiple browsers uh, in the same test. Uh, and so on and so forth. There is a huge, a huge number of uh, features. Now, that's not it. Uh, you can build tests very quickly with Test Trigger. In fact, uh, we can help you out. Uh, and there is a recorder. Test Trigger is not record and play, please. Uh, uh, this recorder just will help you to uh, formulate your steps in your common sense English. For example, we can go here, go there, click here, um, and do something, uh, and it will record it, and you'll be able to uh, save it, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, uh, it tried to get as close as possible to how you'd express it in plain English. Of course, it added some scrolls, which I did. Uh, it even recorded the hooring our admin and it detected that I'm logged in so it added a login for me automatically and login is a complex function on test trigger uh, which tells the system to log in as soon as you provide the credentials so it will log in for you um, all right uh, that's uh, not all the point uh, of all of that is that you'll be on top of being able uh, to, to easily build tests you'll be able to build it about 15 times faster than with selenium uh, especially with the rules using which you can literally ex map exactly your own terminology which you yourself uh, use in your own uh, test cases so once you outline um, uh, your, your terminology, you literally can uh, copy paste the test cases because test trigger is um, plain English, plain plain text. And these are those examples where we were entering test in the first name and rigor in the last name. Now, not that's not it. Uh, we also help our customers to maintain. Uh, tests more efficiently and for that we extract unique issues in some cases might affect one test or two tests 
of course you can see steps to reproduce uh, and create jury issue with one click most importantly you can adapt to new functionality very easily click find fix by find and replace literally exactly as it sounds and you can let's say change want to change ampersand to end change it like this find all it will find all occurrences select the one which you want to fix click replace selected bump done so this is how we provide tools for our customers for test maintenance and this is how our customers spend 200 times less time maintaining test trigger tests uh, finally of course we have uh, not only test trigger uh the sorry uh, free trial but also free version you can go to testtrigger.com click sign up and uh, there is free trial in here for private tests and free public plan for anything that you do will be public publicly available and searchable on the web but it is forever free and of course you can uh, request a demo and free trial uh, for that thank you very much